probably what looked to be just tufts of grass when they stop and stand up miraculously transform into meerkats. These animals are so well camouflaged right now in this dull, dry environment which has not had any rain for weeks and weeks and weeks on end. The Ungulungu meerkat group, the meerkat magic conservation project, the meerkat magic valley here in Otsur in Western Cape South Africa is just heading off to their sleeping burrow now. Already in the last two and a half hours they have encountered aerial predators which have caused them to run off to escape tunnels. They've been fighting over the very scarce food available in this area and I've also seen one of them bring a very large juicy grub the length of a human finger to one of the babies. Even though they have so little food to share, they are still taking care of the babies from November 2008 litter. Quite incredible. Now uh, that won't be happening for much longer since we are already into February and babies beg for food for about three and a half to four months on average. As I approach the group foraging just up ahead on the way to their burrow, just giving them the characteristic call that I use here for this particular group. Just to let them know I'm not a threat, there's no need to be disturbed. I'm not a predator creeping up on you. As the mare cut up ahead, just had a quick look. Very familiar with the sound. Recognize me now it's carrying on this foraging behavior. The other meerkats are still moving off to get to the sleeping burrow. I see one has gone up on guard not far from here. That's an escape tunnel. It's a few hundred meters away still from the main sleeping area where they're heading. The last few snacks have been dug up before sunset. At the moment they mainly seem to be eating tenebriona beetles, about the size of a small finger on an adult human hand, a nail that is on the small finger. Very hard little beetles, they don't fly but they run very quickly and the meerkats are masters at finding them usually around the bushes in this area and the meerkats will pick them up. grubs around at the moment they seem to have retreated deeper beneath the ground to get away from this incredible heat we've been having here over 45 degrees centigrade for quite a few days so far again without the rain there are no juicy plant roots nearby so many of the tastier food items have gone deep beneath the ground so the meerkats have also been eating what I call their drought supplement the ants and mainly the ant pupa from the Camponotus ant species in particular. They certainly are very difficult to find in the afternoons before they get to the sleeping burrows at the moment with such well camouflaged bodies they just blend into this environment incredibly well. And just up ahead, one of the meerkats has gone up on elevated or raised guard. So I'm going to go have a closer look there. <laughs> the length of the guard is greatly determined by the condition of the meerkat guarding. So if a meerkat has eaten very well, more likely going to guard for a longer period as we found in our research. <laughs> Looking almost like part of the shrub itself. And I see nearby an August litter baby. One litter before the November litter last year is foraging nearby in safety. Of course male and female and young and meerkats will be sentinels and guard. The old meerkats tend to be in more often and will guard more frequently. While one of the meerkats is up on guard from September 2006 litter, the sole survivor in fact from that entire year now, 
choose next in line to in fact become the dominant female should Jabulani, the current dominant female from 2001, pass on. Well, she is getting very old now. Four years is already old in the wild. So she's, she's been through droughts and flood years. Many, many group fights and she's still doing well. She is actually leading the group back to the burrow at the moment, calling, gradually following her. So yeah, while this female is up on guard, very few others will actually guard for more than a second or two. There's one just standing up briefly, and then down again, while she continues to guard. There's another one, standing up briefly. And down. These longer elevated guards tend to happen more and more later in the day when the meerkats have eaten well in the earlier part of the day. I found. But as the group gets further and further away from where she is, she also has to take precautions and follow them, otherwise, she might become a target for a predator. For too much longer she'll probably move on because I see the rest of the group is actually getting further and further away. Of course, I'm standing right here watching her. And she's treating me just like I'm not even here. Of course, she's not ignoring me, she knows very well that I'm here. It's just a tolerance gained over many, many years of trust, not disturbing them, always letting them know exactly where I am that I'm not a threat to them in any way. Announcing my presence is a good way of showing them that I'm not a predator, using stealth to reap up on them, of course. Just going to see where the rest of the group is going before sunset. Really not much time left, maybe 20 minutes or so. It'll start to get dark. So the meerkats must get to the burrow before much longer. The nearest meerkat to her now, 30 meters or so. Mm. Of course, I never imitate meerkats when I'm doing research with them here. The Meerkat Magic Conservation Project. If I was to imitate the meerkats exact calls, what would happen is they would treat me like a big meerkat basically. They would no longer stand up on guard because I'd be doing all the guarding, it would seem. So, I use sounds that are not meerkat sounds. Are not actually meerkat sounds. In fact, they've got nothing to do with the environment and that's on purpose. If I had to make whistling sounds and other sounds that these animals react to, they would react, of course, to the sounds. And I made them, and any information or data I collected would be skewed or biased by my very presence. I don't want them to treat me as anything more than basically an object, just something that's there, a noisy object. So they know where I am, but that's where the interaction is at. And it looks like the guard is about to end. Groups moving further away. Ah, Cape Crows in the distance. Part of the Vigilance Network or Alliance. 